So today is revision, right? Revision. I will revision for the wound and the fracture first. Okay. Can you can you all see the screen? Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. If you can't see the screen, just tell me. Yeah. I got this like last week and suddenly black out. Okay. We will revision again about wound and bleeding. So for the wound, you just need to focus on recognizing the types of wound. Okay, and then the treatment, the yeah, treatment. So here is three types of wounds, incised wounds, there's laceration wound, and abrasion wound. And just for your more informed, you need to, like, for more safe, like, you need to memorize their spelling. Okay, so because the during exam, they might be asked you to write down the name, and then it's not it's not the question is objective. So in some is you need to it's subjective you now. Okay, so we go with that one first. Incise wound is always like um when you the knife cuts your pen, okay, or when you flip the book, the book and then the paper just accidentally cuts you, and uh, they call that is called incise wound, okay, and then the next one is laceration wound, is when your skin is rough on a rough surface, and your skin already. Tear, tear apart or ripping la. so it, it is called laceration wound and the next one is abrasion wound abrasion wound is is something same like a laceration wound but it is the only the skin is scraped off the laceration wound is you can see the flesh but the abrasion wound is only your skin is damaged Okay, clear. Uh, you all, you all can hear my voice clear, right? Okay. So okay, for example, for the abrasion wound, is when you fall down and then your hand, I something just like what what I say is something similar with laceration. Just one is laceration is more serious, and then abrasion is uh. A bit minor but still very pain ah. okay <laughs> so uh, here as you can see the cyclists fall down and then the skin rub against the rough surface because the the land is is rough right and then when the, there's a frictional force and then your skin just tear apart so there's a uh, laceration wound an abrasion wound is yeah when the it's like burn just like because you all learn science right when there is friction frictional force and then there will be um heat okay something like um how to say it? just like when you rub okay so when you rub your hand fast with your head like two of your hands rub together together rub together fast and then you can feel like a bit the the there's a heat 
Yeah, just something like that. A pressure wound is deal with the heat. What mean by X parts? Do we need the X parts? Oh, um, the the example part is just for you to more understand to the wood because we we afraid you all like don't understand the wood. What type of wood is that? Okay. Any question about laceration wood and abrasion wood? Well, need me to explain again. Can I? Okay, then I will proceed. Let's go. Okay, then there's new four types of wound. Contusion wound, puncture wound, step wound, and gunshot wound. Okay, so contusion wound is is when you your hand like hits on a surface like too hard already. Okay, and then your there's like purpose like bruising. Ah, so okay, just for you more understand that like, condition wound is same with bruising. Okay, when you kick on the floor or just hit on the table too hard, and then your hand is like a purplish color like that. This condition wound, which is bruise like bruising, okay? And then puncture wound is like when you are playing with the stapler and then the stapler just like the bullet just enter your nail, your hand or your thumb. So that is called puncture wound, okay? Or like a little, a little pin just like um, penetrate your finger. This is also called puncture wound. Okay. Okay, so another one is step wound. Step wound is also a bit similar with puncture wound, but step wound is more more surface like just straight away penetrate your hand. Not not as minor as the puncture wound, okay? So just you need to know like, which wound is which wound, okay? And then gunshot wound, as you can see the name, you already know gunshot wound is related to gun and the bullets. So like when your bullet is penetrated through your body, like you can see at the movie, the gun like bang, 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 and then just penetrate the head. That's called gunshot wound, okay? Um, smoky pinky, are you okay? Okay, okay, let's continue. Make sure you all understand that. Uh, if you got a little bit confused, just, just come here, okay? Okay, yeah. Contusion wound, okay. Bruising, like you can see at the first picture. Puncture wound, the little pin, like penetrate the skin, is called puncture wound, okay? Okay, this is the treatment for cuts when you cut your finger or cut your hand or anything. Okay, so you do this treatment is to prevent cross infection. Okay, this. Oh. Okay, so let's proceed to the next section. Okay, 
uh, teach again for the treatment for cut and graze. So you do this treatment is to not let the wound become more serious. So the aim is to control bleeding and minimizing the cross infection. Okay, so first you need to wear gloves to prevent cross infection, as you know, I've, I've told you all for many times. And then you need to clean the wound by like with the with water or running water, okay? Don't like just soak in the water. You need to uh, clean the wound with running water, like from the tap, the, the water from the tap like running or use a bottle like just pour on the, on the hand, okay? And then, or any alcohol-free wipes, okay? Alcohol-free wipes, just like something like wet tissue, but without alcohol, you must remember without alcohol, okay? Okay, after you clean the wound, you need to pat the wound, be, pat the wound like dry, to make sure the wound is dry with using a gauze swab. The gauze swab is something like the third picture. Okay, you need to like make sure the wound is dry. Okay, and then clean the, the wound with like and the area surrounding the wound. So you will, you will already clean the wound. And then around the wound, you also need to clean, like when they, when the kids fall down, you need to clean up, clean away all the sand or the mud, okay? And then apply antispectic, sorry. You need to apply the antispectic. Uh, antispectic is something like, something like uh, the things. Okay, and then raise and support the injured parts above the heart level to control breathing. Can anyone tell me why we need to do this? The explain why this action can can control breathing. No. Just tell me how this action can control the aim. Okay, it seems like you all don't so okay. So when you raise your arms, okay, for example, when you raise your arms above the heart level, so the blood circulation will become um something you call the yeah shit, how do I explain that? This one. Okay, yeah, just like when your hand is above the heart level, the blood it's more hard to flow to your hand. So when the, there will be like less, not called less line, like the heart, the blood will not flow so furiously to your hand. So the blood will, will not like um, coming out from the wound like so profusely. Something like that, okay? Need to, just need to know the concept. Okay. You understand more? Can you understand? So, uh, okay, and then cover the wound with sterile dressing and adhesive dressing. You know what is sterile dressing and adhesive dressing? Enough? Okay, these two types of dressing you need to know what. Uh, I think you all learned already, right? 
for this too. Yeah. So another one. To treat the bruising and contusion contusion wound. Bruising is yeah, okay. Yeah, bruising is same with contusion. Okay, so this treatment is to reduce swelling and pain. Because when sometimes when you are bruising, it's very pain, right? And sometimes you will bunk up. Swelling is bunk up, okay? Okay, so first you also need to elevate and support the injured parts to in the com comfortable position. So make sure the casualty is uh, in a comfortable position, okay? And then you need to apply the cold compress. Cold compress, you can this something like ice pack, like something like ice pack onto the bruise for 10 to 15 minutes. And then the ice can can reduce the swelling up, okay? And then, yes, and then this treatment can be remembered as rice treatment. So as well you see, to treat the bruising, you need to use rice treatment. R is for rest, to make sure the Casualty in a comfortable position. Ice is cold compressed. Use the ice pack or ice to compress onto the bruising part for 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, ice and compress it together already and then elevate. Elevate and support. Just, yeah, at the first point you can see elevate and support. So, so to the Casualty can be in the comfortable position. Ah. Okay. Oh. okay, this is management for blisters. Blisters is always happen when you are like hot water just accidentally pour on your hand and there will be something like bubble things grow on your hand. Like, yeah, just like something like bubble things Okay, so to treat this blister is to minimize the risk of infection and prevent the blister to burst. So you need to try to prevent the blister from bursting. Okay, first you also need to wash the area with clean water. Okay, and then gently pat on the dry. Just make sure the wound, the blister part is dry and yeah, and make sure the blister area is dry and the surrounding of the blister area. Okay, with the round gauze pad, something, yeah, gauze, I think you all know. If you don't know, just tell me, yeah. You know what is the round gauze pad and the uh, sterile dressing, adhesive dressing things or not? If you don't know, I will teach you later. I will revise with you later. You understand about a safe dressing and sterile dressing things? If you forget already, I will revise with you later. Hello? 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 Okay. okay. So you want me to revise it or not? Okay, good. Later I will revise this one. Okay, then I will revise for the dressing parts. Okay, this bruising, this stuff. Okay, just now I just stop at the gently pat dry the area, right? So you need to make sure the blister part and surround the blister part the surrounding is dry and then cover the blister with adhesive dressing later I will, I will teach you all and then and make sure the pad is larger than the blister okay don't like the gauze is just smaller than the blister and then you can still see some of the blister is exposed exposed to the air okay you need to cover with this because yeah, as well you see, you can like protect the blister from bursting. And do not pop the casualty blister, okay? 
or else there will be cross infection. Okay, this for management for severe bleeding means your you are bleeding profusely. Means the blood is keep flowing out without control. Okay, first, okay, the treatment for this one is to control bleeding and minimize the infection. Okay, as well I say, when there's a wound, there must be the risk for of infection. Okay, so you need to minimize infection and control bleeding. First, wear gloves and re remove or cut the clothes. Okay, so remove and cut the clothes. Clothing is like, yeah, when the casualty leg is injured and severe bleeding, but he is he or she is wearing long pants. So you need to cut off the cut the long pants into shorter, so you can treat the wound uh, more easily. Okay, and then, yeah, this is why I say expose the wound, cut the clothing to expose the wound. It, it is necessary, yeah. Don't when, don't, when there's no dressing, there's no clothing, is covering, and then you simply cut, 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 okay? And then you need to apply direct pressure with dressing, okay? Dressing is something like, you know, gauze, something like that. And then you need to, or ask the casualty to apply the pressure by itself because sometimes we will like apply too much already the pressure is applying too much already and then so you can ask the casualty to apply by themselves if they can so to so they will not be the they, because they will know how much pressure to 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 apply that okay So and then the third one, elevate and support the injured parts. Okay, above the level of casualty parts. Okay, so just what I say just now, to okay when your limb is above the heart level, so the blood is more difficult to flow to your hand. Okay, so because sometimes again, okay, when you cannot punish the teacher. And you need to you need to raise up your hand like for fifteen minutes, and then you feel like your hand is very very is getting something like um how to say it is that. Something like you can like getting, ah, you you can feel the feeling, right? Okay, when you raise your hand for too long, <sighs> okay, and then there is something the concept like that because when you can feel that feeling is because the blood is very difficult to flow to your hand, and you got that feeling, and your hand will like turning a bit cold. Because there is no enough blood flow to your hand. So there is something concept like that. When you elevate and then the blood is difficult to flow to your hand. So the bleeding can be controlled. Can be, the severe bleeding can be controlled or minimized. Okay. Okay, yeah. My English really chat chat. So if you don't understand my broken English, you need to... You just tell me, lah, okay? Just tell me. So, to make sure you all understand. No, another one. Secure the dressing with a bandage. So, when you just the dressing, the dressing is already covered the wound, you can use a bandage to secure it. Like, tie all over, all over it, and then tie a reef note, something like that. Okay, and then you need to treat for shock. Treat for shock is lack of blood. So shock is means lack of blood. Lah. So the casualty will be like feeling tired, something like that. So you need to 
ask the casualty to lie down and then keep the casualty warm. Okay, with a blanket. Blanket. Okay. Okay, and then just like the third point, raise and support his leg, his leg or hand above the level of heart to control breathing. Okay, and then do not give casualty to smoke, eat, drink, or move unnecessary. So, if the casualty asks you to let him or her smoke, eat, or drink, do not, because it will make the, the pain become worse. Okay, if the casualty needs to like move here, move there, just ask him to stay. Just don't move, ask him to don't move. Because he might also um, criticize the cerebral bleeding to make the cerebral bleeding more serious. Okay, and then if okay, because you don't let them to eat and drink, right? So the casualty might be complaining like they are thirsty. Okay, so you need to okay. So it is one hundred percent. You cannot let the casualty eat. Okay, and then if they are thirsty. You can only like moisten, like use some water and then tap on their lips, like softly tap on the lips. So, okay, to moisten their lips. Use a little bit water, la, like don't let them drink. Just so softly pat on their lips. Okay. And then monitor the record vital signs, something like the vital signs is something like capillary pulse, pulse breathing, something like that, and then send the casualty to hospital for further recover, for further treatment. Okay. Sorry, sir. I'm presenting screen, so... Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was presenting screen. Do you want to rest for like few minutes? Because later I will proceed to fracture section. Just revision. Ah. Okay. Do you want to rest for a few minutes? Dressing. So this adhesive dressing normally apply on small cuts like small wound. Okay, as you can see the picture like um, plaster or something like this. Okay, can I? 
You all know this at uh, acid dressing right here. Okay. Now this is thorough dressing. Thorough dressing is the gauze, something like gauze that seal in protective wrapping. Okay, so this is um keep in a very good con a very safe very safe wrapping. Okay, that way you can see here. Here's sterile. And then non sterile dressing. Non sterile dressing is not keep is normally not keep in a um wrapping. Mm -hmm. something that see hey. I think sorry sir. The ME people. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, and then, then this is non sterile dressing. Okay, so non sterile dressing, there will be gauze dressing and improvised dressing. Gauze dressing is the first picture, and then the improvised dressing is the second one. Just like the non, the improvised dressing sometimes is to, like when there is no any, there's no any gauze dressing, so you need the improvised dressing to replace it. So improvised dressing can be clothes or any blankets things to support the 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 padding things the gauze okay so make sure you all can differentiate the gauze dressing and improvised dressings Ooh. okay that's all sterile dressing is this one see in protective wrapping additive dressing is Something like plaster that apply in a small cuts and grace and non sterile dressing, ghost dressing and improvised dressing. Can I you can understand right? Okay. Good. Now let's proceed to fraction. Fracture, no fracture. <laughs> Make sure you understand, uh, because all of this will be tested at the exam for this Sunday. Whew. Okay, fracture is when your bone is break or crack, means your bone is patta already. Okay, there is two types of fracture. Close fracture and open fracture. Close fracture is your bone already cracked, already broken, but it still remains in your body. And then open fracture is your bone but already and the end of the the sharp part just pierce through your skin. Means close fracture, you cannot see the bone yet. Or for open fracture, you can see the bone bone is protruding out. Okay? And then, when there is a close fracture, there will be internal injury, like something you can see the casualty fracture part is swelling, bengkak. Okay, and sometimes the bone that because sometimes of the close fracture is already the bones is already cracked into pieces, so the pieces may like pierce through your blood vessels or organs. For example, an uncle walking on the road and then I crash my car and then his ribs broken already. And then the broken parts just still just straight away pierce through his lungs. Yeah, this is called the bone will pierce through the organs and then they will have internal bleeding and strokes. Okay? And then for open fracture, 
one of the broken bone, bone and pierce to skin surface. Yeah. So when there is the the bone just pierce through pierce out from your body, and then you can see the bone. So of course there will be a wound. Okay, there will be injured parts, and then when there is a wound, there will be risk of infection, and this wound is carry a high risk of infection. Okay, so the casualty will likely suffer shock and bleeding. Of course. It will bleed, and it will bleed severely. Okay, so you need you need to know how to do to treat the severe bleeding, and then to treat the shock. Just what I teach you, revive it with you just now. Okay. Sign and symptoms of fracture. Okay, deformity means your injured the fracture part already out of shape. Like the first picture, the anchor already, come back already. And then swelling, bengkak. Swelling means, yeah, bengkak already, zong. Okay, and then bruising, okay. Like this, purplish color. This is what I just revised you, with you all just now. Um, condition wound. And then, okay, yeah, you, you will see deformity, swelling, and bruising in the fracture side. Of course, the casualty will be you feel very pain, and it will be difficult in moving the area. Okay, you imagine when your hand already broken, you can like simply move around, not cannot rise. Okay, so it will be difficult in moving the area. Okay, and then your limb will be deformity like shortening, bending, and twisting. Bending, bending you can see at uh, the first picture bent already. Okay, shortening sometimes your the leg are like the second picture, the bone already cracked, and then the leg, the length of the leg is not, it's not balanced with another leg. Okay, and then twisting, the hand, your hand twist already. This also can call the symptoms of fracture, and there will be a sign of shock, especially when the tight bones and the pelvis are fractured. Okay, and yeah, there will be also a wound when the bone is protruding, like stick out the skin. That's what I just told you all this now. Okay, let's proceed to closed fracture. There will be two types of closed fracture, stable fracture and unstable fracture. Stable fracture is the end of the injury remain the place. Means your bones already cut out, but it still remain in the same same place. So there will be a risk of bleeding or it can be further damaged. So it like it will be like suddenly become more worse. Okay? So sometimes the stable fraction, if you didn't pull too much attention on it, suddenly the casualty move, 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 and then suddenly turn into unstable fracture. Okay? And then the unstable fracture means the bone can be easily displaced. Means the bone is already cracked and broken into pieces. And it can like being out of place when there is a movement of the muscle of contraction. Okay, your muscle will be contract on in every action. So like suddenly the casually move and then the muscle contract and, and relax. And then so the bone will be out of, out of place. Uh something like this. So you need to remember the the keyword stable fracture, the end of the injury remain in place, and then there will be risk of bleeding, there will be further damage, it's minimal. Okay? And then for the unstable fracture, broken bone ends can easily be displaced. Okay? Can I you understand more? Okay. And then this treatment for closed fracture. Okay. The treatment for closed fracture is you need to support and immobilize. And you need to just need to support the closed fracture to prevent it getting mobile. And then 
prevent the movement of the site in the injury. So it means like your just make sure the bone, no bone at the fracture site is not being moved by it, it is easily. Okay. First, you need to support and immobilize. Mobilize above the and below the injured part. Okay, so then you need to support the injured, you need to support the injured part above and below, okay? Like the bone already bata, you need something to like splinter to support it above and below, like side of it. Okay, and then second one, you need to secure the injured part. Yeah, just what I say, injured part with a sling or a bandage. Just put a sling and then use the bandage to secure the sling together with the injured part. Okay, and then the reef knot, the knot need to tie at the injured site. And of course, you need to call for ambulance 999. And then you need to treat for shock. Shock. Okay, so this one I see. Yeah, the symptoms of fracture, they will be sign of shock. Okay, but you, but you cannot like raise the injured limb. Like to, you cannot elevate it. Okay, so because it will cause the casualty uh, become more pain. Uh, it's not same with like like other treatment for shock. This treatment for shock is a bit special. You cannot elevate it, like raise it because yeah, the casualty will be more pain. And then you need to check the circulation. So like you need to make sure the blood flow more like can flow easily around the leg, okay, to make sure, yeah. And then, at, beyond the bandage every 10 minutes. You need to check the circulation for every 10 minutes, okay, if the circulation is bare, is, is damaged or weakened, you need to, that means that you tie the bandage for too tight already, okay. Okay. And, and you need to make sure that do not move the casualty until the injured part is secure. Secure means that you, the injured part is already stable and it won't be like move, move like being moved by being moved easily. Okay, so it means that you already done support and immobilize the fracture part. Unless, okay, you need Okay, unless the casualty in danger means before you treat the casualty, you find out that the casualty is lying beside um, a car. I uh, just imagine uh, like lying beside a car that is burning. So you need to, you have no choice. Uh, you have to move the casualty to a safer place. Okay, for proper support, you can secure the injured parts to a some part of the body means when the casualty left leg is injured, you can tie the left leg, the casualty left leg with right legs to become more, to make the support more firm. Okay, and then also don't let the casualty to eat or drink because the anesthetic may be needed. So like, because it's too pain already, so you may need anesthetic to numb the pain. So before you're using anesthetic, you must make sure that the casualty is not um, eating is on drinking, okay? And this is treatment for open fracture. You need to wear gloves, okay, to prevent cross infection because there is wound when there is an open fracture. So you need to treat it is to support and immobilize prevent blood loss and movement infection. Means you need 
what you need to do is to immobilize the fracture part to support the fracture part and prevent the like control the bleeding and then control the movement and infection movement is try not let the fracture part to move black like, move, move freely okay number one prevent cross infection number two control bleeding you know how to oh, okay control bleeding you cannot elevate that okay uh, you need to loosely cover the wound with a large cream pad and sterile dressing okay around the wound cover the wound and apply pressure around the wound not on the bone okay to control bleeding and then remember to not elevate the fracture site. Okay, and then place the clean padding all over. And then build up the pad, the clean, the clean pad, like higher than the bone, the protruding bone. Means you need to build, like stack up the padding things. Uh, higher than the bone or around the height of the bone and then you can just bandage all over the pad, the pad. So it, so like two pad is already support the protein wound, the bone, the bone that come out. So you just need the bandaging to secure the pad. So they will, so to provide the support for the bone and the protein bone. Protein bone means the bone that stick out. Okay, number five, secure the dressing and padding with bandage. Yeah, the dressing and padding means the pad that you build, stack up around the protein bones. And then, just like the close fracture, you need to check the bandage, the circulation, the bandage. So, because maybe your bandage tight, tight too tight already, okay? And then immobilize the injured part already done, and then send the KCD to hospital for further treatment. And then you need to treat for shock, okay? And remember, do not elevate the injured part. Treat for shock is you need to keep the casualty warm, something like this. And then monitor and record the vital signs. Vital signs is pulse rate, breathing, circulation, things. And then check the circulation, yeah. Beyond the bandage every 10 minutes for preventing that you tie two ties already. Hey. Okay, uh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, can you all see my screen? If yes, you can type yes in the chat box. All right. So as you know, this Sunday is the exam day, uh, 31st of May, Sunday, uh, 2 o'clock to 3.30, but then you can join the Google Meet once we send out the meeting ID and the link, it's around like 1.45, then you can join. And same, okay, uh, so do you want some tips and yeah, do you want the exam tips, like your school exam, you want tips? If yes, you can type yes with a lot of exclamation mark. If not, then I don't want to say tips already. You type yes with a lot of exclamation mark. Hey, yes, uh. I don't want to give a how. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. It's not really tips, but then I'll ask you a few questions. So maybe those questions are asked in the exam. I don't know. So you just revise yourself, okay? But I'll only give you, I mean, I'll only revise with you. 
Okay, this is not actually tips, but I will revise with you. Okay, so introduction to first aid. There are major 10 topics, excluding uh, making a report and also uh, head to toe examination. These two are not really in your syllabus. Okay, so the main 10 topics in introduction to first aid. Okay, can someone tell me what is first aid definition? What is first aid definition? First aid definition, are you? Uh, GG la. How to pass ah? First aid definition, the very long one. The first help there is blah 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 blah. Uh, this one, um, if you want to memorize, then you memorize lah. If you don't want, then no need lah. Uh, up to you. If your exam fail also, never mind one, right? Okay, next. What, what are the three first aid objectives? Okay, can you all name me the first aid objectives? Okay, preserve life and then promote recovery and then okay, limit worsening of the condition. Right. So uh actually the exam will not be testing you on how well you can memorize all the words is on how well you understand each and everything. So, for example, I only give you an example. Huh? Let's say I ask you, first aid objective, but then I'll write, uh, please state the first aid objective uh, without any plagiarism or I say without any lifting. Means I don't want exactly the same thing from the manual get it means you need to use your own words to explain what is first aid means i don't want first cell that is given to a casualty before the blah, blah, blah. so you need to use your own words to explain what is first aid definition but make sure the meaning must be there and then uh yeah the meaning must be there as long the meaning is there is acceptable you can use as simple the words very simple as you can you want complicated okay and you want to use your bombastic words anything okay so this is the first tips all right what is first aid priorities this one uh, a lot of you got wrong uh in your trial questions you know that can exam trial questions the first question was first aid priorities, not first aid objectives. So a lot of you will pick preserve life, promote recovery, all those. But first aid priorities, different, okay? So first aid priorities got about eight to 10 like that. So you need to remember that, okay? Same thing, don't memorize the words, okay? Remember the meaning, okay? Next. Triage. Okay, what is triage? Can you explain what is triage? Anyone? Anyone? Triage? Okay, what are the four main categories of triage? <laughs> okay, red, green, white, and then one more, yellow. Okay, good. So let's say there are four casualties. Okay, there are four casualties. One is red, one is yellow, one is green, one is white. Okay, four. White is same as black, uh, okay? Green also same as blue. So green, same as blue, white, same as black. So there are four, okay? Red, yellow, green, white. So there are four casualties. Okay, which one should you say first? Red, okay, reason. Why red? <coughs> why why not white first? Eh? White is more urgent. Eh? 
white is they die already, they, they no need save the white one, man. Oh, is it? Okay. Then why not green, man? You know, like, let's say, uh, if I only have, uh, let's say, I'm green, uh, I only have a small cut on my finger. Okay. Why don't you treat me first? I just small cut only, do it for a while, then you can go and save other people already, man. Like, let's say you just spend like two minutes on me, then you go and save others. If you save the red one first, you spend like 10 minutes during the red one, and then you will have like no more time for the green one. Not life threatening. Huh? What is life threatening? What is life threatening? Serious. Huh? Or oh, they can die. Mm. Okay, not bad. Hmm, okay, okay. So, how do you identify them? Like, uh, which one is green, which one is red, which, which one is yellow, which one is white, or just simply, oh, this one more handsome, so this one is green. This one may ugly, uh, this one go die, uh, white. Check their condition, like how? Check pulse, check breathing, and also the main thing, the first main thing. Yeah, can the patient walk? Okay, remember, uh, I won't repeat again. Uh, you go and study. Okay, so if after that, you can go and you know watch the YouTube videos if you want to revise again. Okay, next, uh, vital signs. Okay, what are the four main vital signs? Four vital signs. Mm -hmm. I'll read and then After that, breathing rate. What else? Level of response. Okay, and body temperature. Very good. Okay. Okay. Is pulse rate and heartbeat rate the same thing? Mm, actually, it's no, but then it's similar because uh, you know what is pulse rate? Okay, what is pulse? Pulse is when the blood passes through your blood capillaries, so it has like you know a pressure. So that is your pulse, and then rate means how how many pulse per minute. So it described as rate. So it's pulse rate. Heartbeat rate means your heartbeat, you know, the heartbeat in one minute. So it's actually similar, means one heartbeat equals to one pulse rate. So it's not exactly the same thing, means heartbeat is like you measure from the heart. Pulse rate, you measure from the pulse, but then one heartbeat equals to one pulse rate. So they are the same thing. Okay, they are not same same, but they are not different different. Okay, they are same same, but different different. Okay. So can I say? Can I check your pulse, or can I check your pulse rate? Pulse rate. Hmm. Okay. Um. See ya. Can I? I check your pulse rate or can I check your pulse? Okay, if a doctor will say, can I check your heart or can I check your heartbeat rate? Check your pulse means that thing. You are not checking the pulse rate. You are checking the pulse. Okay? Just remember. Huh? Okay, is breathing rate and ventilation rate the same thing? Breathing rate and ventilation rate. <laughs> okay.
Okay, the answer is yes. Breeding rate is equal to ventilation rate. But breeding rate is not the same as respiration rates. Okay, you know respiration inside your body, you know, you use the glucose or those. That one is respiration. But then under your standard, maybe you learn science, right? You learn like respiration means breathing, but actually not. It's under your chemical reaction in your body. So breathing rate is not the same as respiration rate, but breathing rate is the same as your uh, ventilation rate. Okay. Next, primary survey. Okay, what is primary survey? Primary survey, KDRABC. Can is it possible for me to do, uh, like another sequence? Let's say I want to check breathing first and then only airway in certain condition. Is it okay? Okay, I didn't say anything. Ah, uh. is your is your answer? I didn't say anything. Okay. Secondary survey. Okay, what is secondary survey? Sample. Okay, same thing. Don't memorize each and every word in sample. Know how to apply it. Okay, next we have uh, to minimize cross infection. Okay, how do you minimize cross infection? All those you need to know. Lah. Okay. Treatment priorities, go and flip your first aid manual. Okay, first aid manual that treatment priorities. Treatment priorities means it's how to say it's somehow like triage. Okay, but then triage is more accurate. Treatment priorities is like more to a person. Okay, let's say like there are four casualties now. Okay, if there are four casualties, you use triage. Okay. Or more la, more than four, ten, hundred also can use triage. As long as you start with the red and then continue. The last is the white. As you said, la, okay. For treatment priorities, is that let's say a single casualty, okay, one casualty, he has uh let's say no bleeding, then some bleeding on his left arm, and then he has a fracture on his right leg, and then uh something, something else la, means the priorities means which like in a person, he has a lot of wounds and a lot of, you know, treatment needed. Then which one should you start first? So this one you need to know lah. You should start from CPR, start from managing the wounds, or it starts from the treatment for uh, fracture, all those. Okay. And lastly, uh, making a call. Okay. Call ambulance. You need to know the steps to call an ambulance. Try not to jumble up the steps. Don't straight away start, uh, I'm at McDonald's. No, you need to start one step by one step. Okay, but not necessarily you need to follow like exactly the steps, you know. Some, like let's say, uh, you can say the location first before the uh, emergency situation or you can say emergency situation first before the location. It doesn't matter. But then make sure you start by uh, identifying yourself, introduce yourself first. Not straight away, I, I'm McDonald, got car accident. Uh, then at last only you say, oh, I'm actually uh, Ali. My phone number is 12345678. Okay, make sure you start a sequence, but not necessarily 100% that sequence. Okay, because first it is like, you know, it's, it's not fixed. You need to see what situation, the, you know, what treatments, all those. So, Introduction to first aid, done. Okay, that's all you need to know for introduction to first aid. Very easy, very simple. Next, bandaging and wounds. Okay. Bandaging and wounds, first thing you need to know is arm sling and elevation sling from the first step to the last step. Okay, as if you are doing a practical, but it's theory question, but you need to know all the practical stuff. Okay, very important. Dressing and bandaging, like just now the trainer said, what are the types of dressing, all those adhesive dressing, sterile dressing, okay? And then bandaging, we have what? Roller bandage, 
triangular bandage, what are the purpose of dressing, purpose of bandaging, how do you do bandage, okay? All those are very, very important. And then for wounds, <coughs> what are the types of wounds? Okay, seven types of wounds, the name of the types of wound, how do they look like, uh, what are the characteristics of the wound, and then lastly, the treatment for each type of wound. Like let's say incise wound, how do you treat incise wound? Gunshot wound, how do you treat gunshot wound? Okay, and all those. Okay, next. Fracture and transportation. Okay, so first type of fracture. Okay, what are types of fracture? Open fracture, closed fracture. What are types of closed fracture? We have stable and unstable. Okay, fracture treatment, make sure you go and look into it. Okay, we have, okay, you need to know strain, sprain, cramp also, as listed as one of the exam syllabus. Treatments, okay, what are the treatments for strain, sprain, cramp? Are they the same or are they different? You need to know what are they. You don't have a all strains like that, sprain is like that. You need to know what is strain, what is sprain. Okay, type of stretcher. Okay, there are five types of stretcher. How do they look like? What are the uses of the stretcher? Okay, like let's say um, normal condition, we use standard stretcher. Like let's say you got spinal injury, we use scoop stretcher, all those you need to know. Okay. Type of transportation are those like uh, human crutch method, drag method, cradle method, piggyback method, four and a half carry, carrying chair, uh, three and a seat. Uh, four handed C, lock row, all those you need to know, and also their users. Means normally not really used, but in which situation, like let's say the casualty has a fracture on his leg. So, do you ask the casualty to stand, or do you like just drag him, or do you use piggyback or what else? You need to think is it suitable to use this transportation for this type of casualty? Like when he has uh, bleeding on his head, uh, what type of transportation do you need to use okay so you need to think not really into half hour of memorizing all the words but you need to think the exam right the questions are very logical so like even if you have not attended any of the class you can still answer the question very logical as long as you have the common sense then you can answer the questions okay next uh okay you need to know what is mild choking, okay? How do you identify mild choking and the treatment, okay? What is severe choking and then the treatment? And also, very important, recovery position, okay? How do you do recovery position? The right arm, where's the position of the right arm? Where's the position of the left arm? Where's the position of the left leg and the right leg? <coughs> turn to which side? Is it to the left side? Is it to the right side? How many minutes do you need to turn the casualty? Like, let's say, for 10 minutes, the casualty lie on the left side. For another 10 minutes, casualty lie on the right side. You okay, need to turn, so you can find out. And then the universal sign of choking, what is it? Is it grabbing your neck? Is it grabbing your waist, your chest, your eyes, your nose? What is it? Okay. CPR, very important, the full name of CPR. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Okay, remember, we will ask you maybe, I don't know. Okay, and also CPR, the sequence DRSABC, and your level, you still don't need to know D yet. Okay, uh, high quality CPR, very important. Same thing, do not half out bulat bulat. Okay, use some common sense to understand what are the high quality CPR. Okay, can you all tell me what are the seven high quality CPR? Seven high quality CPR.
high quality CPR, no one knows uh, G or how to pass exam or anyone, anyone high quality CPR. Okay, good. Center of chairs. Next. Compression rate. Okay, next. Two already. Okay, five more. Full recoil. Avoid excessive ventilation. Okay, four already, three more. Okay, ratio five, minimal interruption six, and one more. Hmm. Mm, yes, after 30 compression. Okay, proceed to do ventilation immediately. Okay, so all this you need to know lah. Okay. And then make sure same thing, don't memorize it. How do you understand it? What is full recoil? What is a uh, minimum interruption? What is ratio? Ratio very simple. What is avoid excessive ventilation? You need to know the words. Even if it's objective, we won't give you uh, A, avoid excessive ventilation, B, full recoil, C, ratio, blah, 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 D, minimal interaction. We won't give you like that. We will change the words. So it's how you understand it. It's not how, you, how well you can memorize it. Okay? And also, lastly, simple AD, very simple one. Okay, very simple knowledge on AD. Like where, uh, what are the uh, precautions you need to know? Like let's say you need to remove all the metal objects. You need to wipe dry and clean the body. Make sure you remove the clothing. You do not stick the sticker, or the pads on the clothing. Okay, make sure when you are delivering a shock, no one is touching the casualty, and. Uh, what else? What else? Okay, make sure you need to do CPR first before you use AED. After AED, continue CPR. Is it the left? Uh, where do you position the pads? Okay, all this you need to know. Okay, I think that's all. Other than that, all are very common questions. Like, can I tell you uh, Okay, but then it's very logical question that you. You just need to think, take some time to think before you choose your answer. Okay, just think for a while. Is it this suitable or is it this? Some questions are very tricky. Some are very direct, straightforward questions. You see the question, you know the answer. But some you need to read the question properly before you really choose your answer. Okay. Uh, we have... 40 questions as state. Okay, we have 40 questions, but 45 marks means some questions we have two marks, some questions with three marks. Okay, so we'll multiply the your and your score with by two, so you'll be 90 marks. Okay, 90, and then 10 marks will contribute to your attendance. Yeah. And what else you need to know? Oh yeah, remember on that day, everyone must turn on your camera. Not only you lah. Okay, everyone, all the members from all the division, we have about 450 members taking the exam. So, uh, all objective questions, right? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some subjective. Okay. Uh, yeah, just do lah. Whatever you get, you just do. Okay. But anyways, I have a good news on the day.
okay, I won't tell you now, but on that day. Because if I tell you now, then you'll become lazy really. I need to tell you on that day. How many points count as plus? Hmm. It depends. Uh, I, I cannot say 40, but what if the question is too hard for you? Then everyone get below 40, then a lot of you fail. I, want, I need to see how how many of you get how many marks la. it's like SPN like that there's no fixed mark no fixed grade to say oh this one is a plus this one is a minus okay but then depends so as long you just do your best you don't have to worry about the passing grade just do your best and yeah any questions you want to ask can ask anything yes turn on your camera and mute your mic okay everyone must turn on your camera remember if can uh not all of you must have two devices unless you really 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 don't have the uh, another device then you use your smartphone same thing you must turn on your camera one device to sh join google meet turn on your camera and then show what you are doing it's not only your face i need to see your face and your hands including your phone or your ipad you are using to answer the questions okay make sure i can see your surrounding also make sure no one is there like your siblings cannot be there your parents cannot be there to guide you how to answer questions make sure no uh no manual on the book uh, on the table also no notes also okay uh and then if the siblings are very small like you know you are seeing like five years old three years old that's okay never mind but not 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 those like you know uh elder than you and then those like let's say younger than you for one year all those if like very very young one then it's okay can acceptable if you know as long as they understand what is first aid then cannot lie scare them right you know cheating will happen okay so all these to prevent cheating i think can la can la seven okay la okay so make sure one device to turn on your, your camera another device make sure you have a qr code scanner do not use wechat qr code scanner because uh it will be error a lot of times so make sure you have a downloaded qr code scanner Okay, once we present the QR code on the screen, then you can start scanning the QR code and then wait for the password. There's a password in the Google form and you can start answering the question. Okay, other than that, I'll explain during the exam day to the, all the members. Okay, there'll be 400 members. Yes, correct. Answer in front of your laptop or phone. No, no need. On that day, right, you will take your attendance by scanning the QR code, and then you have to fill in a Google form for your attendance, and That's another one is for your exam questions. So you do not need to type in a chat box. Any other questions? Once, once you can scan the code, do we need to key in anything? Yes, you can start keying in your personal details. You can start keying in your personal details like your, your name, your division. Until you reach a session, they ask you to insert the password. Uh, on the day, we only will give you the password, then only you can proceed to answer the questions. If not, you cannot answer questions. So you just you just type whatever you can type until the password section you don't have password you cannot enter iphone can scan code right yes can anything else no if no then i'll dismiss you now okay 
Yeah, yes, you'll get the password on that day. If I give you early, then you can start doing your questions. You know? So I'll give you on that day. Okay. Okay, bye. You can you can leave now.